Our second and last presenter <coughs> speaker is Professor Masahiro Morioka from the Waseda University. His, his talk is on <coughs> the concept of persona in Watsuji and its importance in contemporary bioethics. Thank you very much. Um, last year, I gave a presentation on manga and philosophy. And this year, I'm going to talk about what is the philosophy and contemporary bioethics, especially brain death. And I am not a specialist on what is and but I, I'm, I have been um, heavily um, influenced by his philosophy. So today I'm going to talk about um, how I was influenced, have been influenced by Watsuji's philosophy, especially um, by Watsuji's one essay, Mask and Persona. And in his essay, Mask, Mask and Persona, which was published in 1935, Watsuji talks about the Japanese no play and its relationship with the concept of persona. Um, the discussion of mask and persona in this charming essay is very complicated and twisted. I think we can summarize the main argument of his essay as follows. In a no play, a player sets a special mask on his, on his face and dances on the stage. Watsuji says a no mask looks like the face of a person who has died suddenly. However, as soon as no player puts a mask on his face, the mask starts to show various expressions as if it were a face of a living person. And the movement of the no player's body breathes life into the dead mask and lets it show various emotions of a living person. At first, the player's mask is that of a deceased person, but gradually the player's bodily movement begins to give life to it. And finally, <clears throat> in the midst of a beautiful dance, the mask acquires vital sparkles on its surface. Watsuji finds two processes occurring on the stage. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Firstly, the no player's body breathes life into the de dead mask. The no mask is dominated by the player's bodily movement. But secondly, the no mask, which has acquired life by the bodily movement of the player, becomes the locus of personhood and regains its body and limbs. In the first phase, the player is the subject of the body, but in the second phase, the mask becomes the subject of the body. Watsuji writes as this, the mask or face has a central significance for human existence. It is not only a part of the body, but also the locus of the subject that governs its body. That is, that is to say, the locus of personhood, jinkaku no za. All things considered, it is very natural to hear, natural here to imagine the word persona. And here, where uh, Watsuji uses this Latin word uh, uh, by using katakana, persona. And here, Watsuji loosely connects uh, three concepts. The concept of persona, and the, the locus of personhood, and the no mask on the stage. However, his argument is not so clear. And I want to interpret Watsuji's theory of persona as follows. First, a no mask doesn't have its own self-consciousness or rationality. It is nothing but a mask made of wood, just wood. But as soon as a player puts it on his face and started to move on the stage before an audience, the no mask becomes the locus of personhood and governs 
the player's body. As a result, in the midst of a no play on the stage, a persona actually appears on the surface of the no mask on the player's face. This persona is not the player's personality. It's different. This persona is a mysterious something that has emerged from the whole interactions of the player, other actors, and audience, music, and the story. Watsuji's persona theory interpreted above suggests that even a wooden mask, devoid of self-consciousness or rationality, can be a kind of person that is persona when it is animated by the bodily movement of a player or something else. So this idea clearly contradicts with the mainstream European concept of persona or person, which requires self-consciousness, free will, or rationality as a necessary condition for some things being a person. And the personhood argument so-called personhood argument in bioethics is the latest example of this. And I think Watsuji seem, seems to stab a vital point of European personhood theories. And in the next part of my presentation, I'm going to talk about the brain-dead person and its connection with persona. And we can find similar ideas or thoughts in the narrative of narrative of family members who experience the brain death of their beloved parents or children. In Japan, there have been many books, articles, and memoirs on brain death patients written by the family members who do not necessarily believe that brain death is human death. Here I'd like to quote two narratives of the family members who lost their beloved ones by, by way of deep coma or brain death. The first is from a letter to a newspaper written by Ryoko Watanabe-san. It was her opinion that if she herself became brain dead, her organs should be donated immediately. One day, her father became deep coma. She writes, To touch the body of my unconscious father and to feel the warmth of it, of it is the sole dialogue between us at present. It is different in quality from everyday communications through words and expressions. Feeling them, my sensitivity broadens and deepens unlimitedly. I soothe myself and make, a, make preparation for the inevitable parting with my father. And skip the next paragraph. I myself wish to be an organ donor, but having gone through this experience, I've come to think of forgiving my family's sharing of my worms as long as possible, even for a day or for an hour, if my family wishes it at a time, just like my father does at present. The next is um, the narrative from the journalist Kunio Yanagida, not anthropologist, but the journalist Yanagida Kunio's book, for Sacrifice, which was published in 1995. He lost his second son by way of brain death. He touches the warm hands of his son and calls his name Yojiro. He talks to his brain dead son on the bedside about his memo memories of their past experiences. Yanagida says, my son's body converses with me without spoken language. This is a mysterious feeling. And quote continues, when Kenichiro and I talked to Yojiro, though he was brain dead, his body talked back to us. This was truly a mysterious experience. This was probably a sense that can be understood only by members of family who have shared happiness and sorrows with each other. Despite the scientific explanation that a brain dead person is literally a dead person who has no consciousness or senses, I became quite sure that the beloved one's brain dead body means a lot to the family members who have shared a spiritual life with each other. And this was a very strange experience 
for him because he strongly felt as if there were someone, some living person, in front of him, although his son was in the state of brain death, lying on the bed without self-consciousness. As a journalist, Yanagida clearly understood the fact that the brain dead patient has lost self-consciousness permanently. But as a father, he couldn't help noticing a fragment of personhood on his beloved one's beloved son's very brain dead body. We can find similar narratives in the memoirs of a member, number of families of brain dead patients. In an impressive memoir by, by the parents of a brain dead daughter, they write vividly about how their brain dead daughter let them communicate with her body. For example, her mother puts perfume on the daughter's foot, brain dead daughter's foot, and every time her father leaves the patient's room, he speaks to his daughter, Gambaria, hanging there. They understood that their daughter had lost self-consciousness in the state of brain death. But at the same time, they were perceiving a mysterious something on their daughter's body. They over, uh, the overwhelming power of that something prompted them to make such actions, conversation. Reading these two narratives and an additional text, what is most impressive to me is the fact that they believed there occurred a dialogue or conversation without spoken language between a brain dead person or a person in deep coma and family members. They believed they were able to have a dialogue with something which appeared on the body of their beloved one in front of them. I think that this something appearing on the bodies of brain dead patients is the same thing that Watsuji found appearing on the no mask on the stage that is the locus of personhood on the mask persona. A persona appearing on the no mask on the body, uh, I'm sorry, I, a persona appearing on the no mask or on the body of a brain dead patient is not an illusion. It is something the audience or the family members actually perceives. But of course, it is not a spiritual entity or a ghost. We cannot directly see, touch, or hear a persona itself, but we can perceive its existence with our whole body, and we can communicate with it without language. In other words, a persona is a voice without sound. Uh, these words are mine, not Watsuji's. In other words, a persona is a voice without sound that can be heard by people who have had special relationships with a person in the state of brain death or the audience on the stage who are deeply into the no play in front of them. And the message that the persona's voice without sound delivers is, I am here. <coughs> this is the essence of the advent of persona. And this is what Watsuji wanted to say in his essay, Mask and Persona, and what I have discovered in the narratives of family members of branded patients. They were encountering the voice without sound, I am here in a no theater or on the bedside in the hospital. And in the case of brain death, a persona reveals itself to a limited group of people surrounding that patient. So probably a persona does not, usually does not appear on the on, um, attending physician because there have been no such deep relationship between an, um, brain dead patient and physicians. Okay. <clears throat> However, it is difficult to determine whether a persona is an example of subjective reality or objective reality. Because in the case of because in the case in which 
family members share the experience of the advent of a persona, there might be some kind of objectivity among the family members. So this may be a gray zone between subjective reality and objective reality. This is a very interesting point. And a, so a persona has its own ontological status in the universe. It is not an illusion nor an entity existing on the level of a spiritual world. And I feel this, sign, this line of thought will lead us to a kind of animistic worldview in which many things in the universe can have their own persona in relationship with an observer who sees those objects. So we need to develop an integrate, integrated theory of personhood that comprises, on the, on the one hand, the idea of personhood based on, based on self-consciousness and rationality, and on the other hand, the idea of personhood based on persona in Watsuji's sense. Not, and not only branded patients, but also living human beings with functioning brains like us can have persona. For example, um, when we say hello, say hello to a human being sitting silently in a room, I think we are talking to that human being's persona, not the human being's person. Uh, so, mm, okay. Uh, if we if we were talking to the human being, beings to inspect whether she's a person equipped with self-consciousness and reality, rationality, we could say we are talking to a potential person, but this is a rare, rare, care, rare case when we find someone sitting silently in a room and I say, hello, do we, um, are we inspecting that this person has whether this person has rationality, self-consciousness or not. No, ja we are just, just talking to that person. So talking to what? I think we, I, I talk, I'm talking to that person's persona, not that not person's bi biological body, not person's person. Okay. And <clears throat> this is the last slide. And I'm now thinking about these things, and this is one example of the integration of the, the ordinary personhood theory and persona in Watsuji's sense. Um, I think there are three layers of personhood. So I, I, I want to think that this persona is not an entity, but a layer. So three layers are this. First, there is a layer of person. The second is a layer of, a, of persona in Watsuji's sense. And the third is a layer of biological life. And many human beings, like us, can have layers one, two, and three. We we are at the same time person, persona, or some, somebody, and a bio biological life. But brain dead, for example, brain dead human beings can have layers two and three, but not one. And interestingly, we, we could also say um, hard dead human beings were those or a memento of the deceased my father, my, my mother, and robots can have layer two. But probably they, uh, at that time, they don't have layer one, one and three. So this is, I think, very interesting topic for our discussion in terms of philosophy and uh, phenomenology, ontology, I don't know. Uh, but. So unbiotic so far has overlooked the importance of the layer two, the layer of persona. This is my 
one of my conclusions on this topic. And this is a references. And you can download uh, the former version of this slide because I have changed uh, uh, um, the last two, two slides. So, but, but you can download the older one from the website. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Maruka. Actually, I have read his uh, article uh, on, like, before, like two or three years ago, and I was also, at the time, I was also touched by his article. And thank you, I'm very honored to, oh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen to your presentation today again. So um, it's now time to open for the discussion. Yes. Uh, I wonder if Watsuji, uh, when he speaks of persona, does he mention that original meaning of persona is mask? Yes, um, he mentions the that he, um, original. Uh, yes, so, so he mentions uh, the word persona, and it um, in the in the ancient Greek it was um, mask and re, uh, and it's um, uh, so, so, so social. Uh, status and such and such, and in the in the in the in the tradition of Christian tradition, there's the Trinity and such things. But um, he only just mentioned that point in four, ten, or twenty um, lines. So very very short. So it that part is most is is the not, most not interesting part <laughs> of that essay. <laughs> And I, I suspect, um, yes, so my impression is, is this. Watsuji, in, in that essay, Watsu, Watsuji trying to uh, develop, uh, think, de develop his theory of persona, and suddenly he stop, stops writing about persona, and, um, at, at, yeah, so, uh, this is my feeling, he suddenly stops about his um, interpretation of persona, and I suspect that he might have um, noticed that this kind, this line of thought, may um, depart from main, from the mainstream European philosophy and come to uh, may come to kind of animistic world. So I, I don't know, but he might afraid. He might be afraid of. Being um, involved in Japanese old animistic world, there everything has its soul and such and such things. Because um, he his his original background was an um, European philosophy, for example, Kant, Heidegger, and such and such Hegel, such and such. So yes, yeah, so my answer is yes. He he mentions, but just very small, very short, short, short. Yeah. I have one more, but... Okay, uh, I have one more, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> you go. I'm curious uh, if, according to this notion of um, persona, would you say that a, a photograph of a person has a persona? Yes, of yes. course, yeah. Okay. Um, mostly, um, and also most most uh, uh, <clears throat> and in addition the robot this is a very interesting topic now and in in, in the future bro the the very interesting topic is whether or not the robot can have persona or not not yeah thank you um thank, thank you for your talk it was really interesting i'm fascinated in how you draw out this idea of persona and its relationship to sort of the animistic side of things. And on that topic, it's clear that, clear that um, no theatre has this sort of, um, by, by its very quality of, you know, bringing masks to life, it kind of has, you know, an ethical status. But do you think that there's some uh, special significance of uh, arts which um, sort of directly address this um, animistic or um, the idea of drawing 
persona from anima. So, uh, do you think that art, which are sort of steeped in this, um, when they uh, deal with specifically ethically ethical themes, do you think they have some sort of heightened status amongst um, arts, which can make us ask? ethical questions and think about ethical problems. I'm thinking here specifically about animation um, and how animation recently has taken to a lot of environmental concerns and um, the like. So do you think it's important uh, in some special way? Um, excuse me, um, can I, um, is your question is, um, is it is it possible to connect the um, the concrete ethical ethical problems and um, issues with the art, with the I, uh, animation and no play or such things? I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Follow. Yeah, in, in, in a way, yes. Uh, in because it seems like when Watsuji is drawing of, about persona in masks in no theatre, mm -hmm. it's kind of about the fact that no theatre uses masks and masks in a certain way, um, but can this be connected to, you know, themes in artwork when artworks specifically ask ethical questions and especially artworks which really emphasise this, this um, element of persona and life and anima? Is that, is that, can they draw on this play between the theme and the relationship with life and persona? It, does that make it um, stronger as an ethical question in an art form? Mm. I... Sorry, it's, okay, a, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's a little bit difficult, uh, hard for me to understand the point of your question, but um, in relation to this um, probably your uh, question. I think, uh, for example, in what is, um, in a no play, for example, they are miss like Mugen no, um, this is a play about the the dead person, dead human being, um, um, at the, um, come comes, okay, ca comes from uh, on the stage and um, the, there was a um, dialogue between the that person, that someone, and the, um, and and the and, and what's what's the word? Oh, was a <laughs> monk, a Buddhist monk. There was a conversation, and the that that person plays a beautiful dance, and then go back to the to the backside of the stage. Okay, this is an. Um, this kind of background um, on the no, no play, and especially in Mugen no. And on the other hand, in the, on the hospital, this is the very the same situation. You see, uh, there is a brain dead father, mother, uh, son, daughter on the bed, uh, on, in, in the hospital's room. And the family members see, touch, feel the their beloved ones who are just in, in, in the in in the uh, the two, um, between the two worlds this world the living world and the and the world of the dead and there is something and some drama and um after that probably perhaps the, the, this patient will be deceased. So this is a place the dead, per, dead human being and the living human being interconnect with each other. And then and they in, they, so the, the, the uh, structure seems to me, looks to me very, very, very similar. So um, of course, um, we, have ha ha we, have, we have to do a lot of ESCO um, discussion and doing um, we have to uh, think about how, what we, we should do to this branded person, whether or not uh, 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 um, so they allow them to do organ transplantation or such things. 
And in the no play, we do not do such things but as an audience. We just um, into that play and um, as an amusement, we can, yeah, uh, look here and gain some something, some pleasure or something. But so this is a different side. But the other side, the there are very similar structure. I don't know how to, how can I say I I, I don't know how, how I can say this, but the structure that bridges between the the world of living and the world of the dead. So, but I'm sorry, I I, I couldn't answer to your question correctly. No, that's that's good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, you distinguish the three layers of personhood. If you can go back to that slide. Mm -hmm. um, this one. Yeah. And I mean, you mentioned how this layer persona, because it can manifest through a mask, through wood, it's not dependent on the third layer of mm -hmm. biological life. Mm -hmm. I'm also wondering how it relates to the first layer. Mm -hmm. Can you expound a bit on what you mean by person and what is kind of like the, the relationship between persona and a person? Yes, um, that's a. Hmm. <clears throat> As a simple reaction, then these two layers are individual because um, there is no special. Um, so something can can be a person and not person, and there are other some other there is a uh, what is that? okay. Um, Imagine and um, for example, imagine a um, very very um, super super computer. So that has a um, rationality. So someday we have to say this that computer has a um, persona because um, that computer has a ra rationality like us. And also it seems that that computer has self consciousness and reflection and okay, but. In that, even in that, in that sense, there are, we might not feel persona on that computer. So this is one example that has um, only ha something that only has a layer one, but not layer two. And the other side is the is the ex example of brain dead, brain dead person for family members in some cases. So that patient's brain does not work, so that, that patient does not have the layer one, but layer two for some family members. Okay, so um, I think layer one and layer two are not, uh, um, in, what, what, what's the English word? Um, each other, mm. oh, Independent. Independent, yes, thank you. <clears throat> Independent with each other. But of course, um, these two layers are closely connected. Yes, of course. But I, I have not been able to <laughs> clearly uh, analyze how these two layers are connected and that, yeah, and the structure, logical structure between these two layers. So I'm, I, this is the topic I, I have to think from now. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, <clears throat> I must read this essay because it seems really, uh, when you were speaking about this essay, Mask and Persona, made me think uh, immediately about this famous essay for Christ uh, on the Über den Marionettentheater, the puppet, uh, puppet uh, theater. When he gives it's really similar because there you can see, uh, I think you can interpret, it, interpret this, this essay in a, and found, find this uh, a second layer of persona because there the moving body is like, uh, uh, like in between, not uh, like he, he, he uh, presents the, the dolls that are moving, that are moving in a way that is more lively than a live person in fact. And uh, so, in a way, the doll can be, can be, uh, they have a different dimension. Uh, that, uh, that doll can have uh, this uh, light dimension. 
and uh, so it's between this biological life and also a person like a um, self-conscious uh, being and also animals in fact because the second scene of this essay is the the fighting bear which is in fact fighting in a, a way that uh, resembles a person so is um, so uh, I find this uh, find it really like similar but I would like to ask if it's um, this persona, it's only like a sta static body, or uh, like in the uh, case of the brain dead person, also it implies in somewhat like a moving body also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, in, as, um, as, <clears throat> I think persona can appear both on the moving things and, and static things. For example, I just I wrote just right here, um, a memento of the deceased. For example, I, I have a watch, which is an, uh, my father's watch, and my father has a deceased. But I can actually feel some, sometimes some persona on his watch, but that, but that watch doesn't move. <laughs> OK, it doesn't work. <laughs> but um, I, I think many people can such experiences. So, so this is a very um, usual everyday experience for many people. But I think um, there has been no uh, mm, major philosophical uh, framework to describe this, this our experience. So um, this is uh, this is one of my um, motivation to think about the concept of persona. And very, very interestingly, um, when Yanagida kunio san um, talked to her on um, his branded son, in this case, uh, that, um, his branded son do, does not necessarily move when he um, talked to, talk to, talk to, to that, his son, perhaps. Okay? Uh, so the, the moving is not the necessary condition for us to feel person. Mm. So, um, and it is so, um, this is also interesting to point out that in Watsuji's case, uh, in the, uh, no play on, on the stage, the Watsuji says that the, the no mask um, acquire life persona by, by, a, by the moving of a no player. So when no player suddenly starts to move his uh, body very slowly, suddenly the no mask acquire life persona. So in this case, um, in the case of no play, a persona can, have, um, can be animated by the body movement. And on the other side, what, what about, what if the, the brain dead, uh, in the case of brain dead patient, I think the human relationship, the history of human relation, accumulated human relationships between the brain dead patient and his or her family members animate, animates the, the brain dead body's persona. So there is a contrast between you, you see, in, in, in the no play, the, the player's bodily movement animates that the, the dead mask into the living persona. And, on the, and in, 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 in the case of brain dead person, the human relationship, especially the accumulated re history of human relationship, can animate the, the, I don't know, something. And that something becomes persona and appeared just like Tachiaru you, you mentioned in your lecture, Tachiaru coming, coming, coming into being on the, on, 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 I don't know, on, on the body or some, somewhere on the patients. So in this sense, there is, again, a very similar structure between the play and, and uh, brain death and patient and his, his family members. So in, 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 in the case of Brendan, I said there is no bodily movement, okay. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 I 
Do we have time? I uh, yes. Um, okay, let's take time until okay two o'clock. But because our keynote speaker was, uh, we have keynote address starting at three thirty, <coughs> and we need one uh, one and a half hours for lunch. So okay. So. so yeah, please. Yeah, I find your suggestion really intriguing and wonderful. And I, I agree that um, bioethics has ignored this, what, you, what you're calling the level of the persona, um, at least as far as the bioethics of concerning brain death is concerned. But um, trying to uh, understand why, what, what you could say to people, both in Japan and in Western cultures, who would tell you that persona, your persona is nothing but a projection of, uh, of, um, of conscious people, uh, sometimes together with a shared consciousness, um, projecting you know, their idea of person, player number one, into uh, either an inanimate object or a, a dead person. Uh, yes. So why should... I mean, you say that it's not an illusion. Yes, no, not an illusion. Uh, because it's a shared experience. Yes. But the, the ones who are experiencing it are the conscious beings around, say, the brain dead person or the, okay. or the child with the doll or something. Mm -hmm. So why, why should we think that it is not a projection? Okay, so I have been um, fighting, combating with that of <laughs> reactions uh, so far, and I think I have to do that. Um, and my reply has been this. Okay, I, I, I understand such an um, argument, but if you say so, how, how can we, um, <clears throat> how can, how can we, de how can we say that you have an Concept consciousness. So this is a, the other mind problem arises. Okay. So the the in, in, as you know in philosophy there is an uh, the very hard philosophical problem the other mind problem because we can't um, uh, and directly and see or touch on anything. So we, we don't have any evidence that there is an other mind. In your in inside your body, inside your body, okay. So this may have this may be, might be an illusion. But we do not we don't have uh, we aren't living in such a reality. We are um, now living a reality that there are in this room probably three uh, twenty or so minds here in this room. But we cannot demonstrate that. Actually, there is 20 minds here. There might be only one. Okay. So theoretically speaking, um, this remains a mystery, philosophical mystery to all of us. So if you say such a thing, you have to ask the same thing about the, uh, the existence of the other minds among our living people. So <laughs> this is um, uh, uh, my... Um, reaction to that kind of uh, question. So, um, I, so, so I think connecting the, the ontological status of persona and ontological status of other minds is very interesting philosophical um, topic for us. And also this is, this is closely connected to, um, I don't know, um, the phenom phenomenological uh, perspective. So, in terms of phenomenology, Husserl and other other philosophers, they are especially Husserl, um, were struggling um, with the idea, with the idea of other minds and, and the reality of other minds. And, okay. So this um, this kind of discussion has basically have a um, close connection with what I have um, presented today, the ontological status of persona. And I, I don't think I, if I, I could uh, persuade you, <laughs> but this, is, this has been, and this is my reaction to that kind of uh, question. Is it, 
is that okay or, or I, I, I well, that, to some people that would if you want to take use that analogy then some people would say well then you just told us that um, the, the ontological status of persona is like the ontological status of other minds which is a mystery then we have two we're left with two mysteries um, <laughs> yeah. so, and that two mystery might be on um, two aspects of uh, one basic problem. Might be. Um, yeah, just, yeah, we, actually, we have three minutes more. Mi three minutes more but then, uh, by taking the privilege of uh, as a <laughs> yeah, chair, <laughs> chair yeah. I'd like to uh, make a, uh, I'd like to pose, uh, no, raise uh, one small remark mm -hmm. to your presentation. Um, I, I'd, uh, I strongly uh, recommend or ask you to read uh, what is this text uh, article on Kant's pers person, person and pers personality, uh, pers personality, no? so, uh, personality uh, and humanity. Mm -hmm. Um, so this article, the personal element, uh, is uh, written in 1935, was it? And yes. uh, before that, and after coming back to Japan from Germany, um, Otsuji has conducted, conducted quite intensive research on Kant, mm -hmm. and he has acquired the idea of person, uh, jinkaku, and uh, uh, personality, um, personality, I think. The Jinrui Se or yeah first yeah he has yeah no uh, Jinkak Se and also he has uh, compared it with human humanity humanity the uh, first he has translated it as Jin Jin uh, Ningen Se but he changed it to Jinrui Se later anyway and uh, he had um, he has actually criticized the reading of Kant in West in the West that um, the, re the reading of Kant at the time is con concerning only the, um, the personality and not the uh, person, uh, the, the materia materiality of the person. So, person, so he has compared, uh, he has made a distinction between things and person as Although in Japanese it both can be called as mono, but mono as things uh, are objectified things, but um, the mono as person is a per uh, is a mono that realizes humanity and uh, or personality. He says so, and this is uh, the. Um, this is what what these things that we can find in Kant. Kant also had a um, kind of distinction between things and human uh, person, and uh, I think it's just a um, kind of it can be a phenomenological um, perception, but uh, we have we regard person as okay things as person because it realizes human uh, personality and that was the uh, according to what that was the, uh, that that's in the basis of Kant's ethics and uh, yeah so and but I haven't this um, this text written by Watsuji is pretty complex and not really examined yet. So maybe mm -hmm. next time in ENOJP conference, please <laughs> <laughs> yeah, compare. That, that, you know. um, that, that article was written before yeah, yeah, Manga yeah. Persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there is a mystery that why he didn't mention Kant in this essay, in, mm -hmm. in the main, um, mask and Persona. That's what actually uh, many Kyoto school thinkers do. Yeah, they don't really cite, oh. but they write. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so okay, we I, need to I, yeah, follow 
it's our tax Thank you very much. So I will so, read. So, 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 so this is the kind of uh, actually um, point to make your comparison between Watsuji and Western mm -hmm. thinking. Watsuji has actually, could actually acquired, uh, acquired the idea from Western philosophy. So, so um, in, inside Watsuji, there are two uh, tensions between Watsuji's um, original traditional European modern philosophy uh, person, personhood and this kind of persona, <coughs> you, you mean that. In, even inside Watsuji, there are two sides. Yeah. His um, interpretation of human, human as human, um, hum, hum, humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think. there is a kind of development mm. and uh, mm, sometimes he is quite westernized person, but still like a, not really westernized, he is a, yeah, like uh, he is thinking in western way, and but not, he sometimes um, criticize other, say, cunt readers, mm. but he's, yeah, kind of discussing in the same context. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, sorry for taking no time, yeah, three minutes over. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing this time.